many poetry that Peter used to be sancti. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, on this episode of Ask Father Anther, we will discuss the very important question facing the Church in these days. Understanding transubstantiation as enlightened by the hypostatic union through the lens of medieval philosophers William of Ockham and Dun Scotus. I know it's a little lighter than our normal topics that we tend to cover on this show, but I hope you will find it as fascinating as I do to find out what these great philosophers have to say about this very important topic. No, no, no! You have got to be kidding me! Oh, hello, dear friends of Christ. Don't worry about that. That's nothing of importance. Uh, well, I guess it's time for my fourth and final video already. Um, so here we are. It's the fourth week of Advent. So stay tuned to hear about three holy women this week. Uh, first, we will speak about Esther, Hannah, and finally, St. Anne. So stay tuned. Here we go. Oh my goodness, I have 10 minutes till Mass. Gotta go. My friends, here we go. We must go in haste because the fourth week of Advent is half a day, maybe a little bit more. So we have little time to celebrate this great and awesome week of Advent. So as we begin, let us light the fourth and final candle. Jesus is, is, is indeed coming very, very soon. And now... Let us pull the final tab. There we go. So the first holy woman I'd like to talk to you about is Queen Esther. And my friend, she was so awesome. She lived about 600 B.C. And um, in the time when the Jewish people were held in captivity by Persia. And at this time, there's a queen by the name of Vashti who had been so graciously invited by the king uh, to come into his presence and dine with him. And she said, you know what? Not today. I'm not really that interested. And the king was enraged. He said, who is Vashti to turn down such a gracious invitation from me? I can replace her. And he did. And so he searched throughout the land for somebody uh, that would be as beautiful or even perhaps more beautiful to behold than his queen Vashti. And so there was one of his servants, Mordecai, who came forward and brought his adopted daughter Esther into the presence of the king. And indeed, he fell in love with Esther and made her one of his kings. And so Queen Esther ruled in his kingdom. Some time went by and Mordecai, was brought into the presence of Haman, the royal vizier. Uh, think of Jafar from Aladdin. Doesn't it just send chills down your, your spine? Haman. And Haman demanded that Mordecai prostrate himself before him. And Mordecai refused, which enraged this Haman that was filled with pride. And by the way, Mordecai and Esther were of Jewish descent. However, the king was unaware of this. But Haman knew of the Jewish descent of Mordecai, and he said, You know what, Mordecai? I say we get rid of all the Jewish people. We don't need you. And of course, this frightened Mordecai very much. So he sent notice to Esther. And Esther, through one of her servants, got the message, and she fretted. She did not know what to do. She needed to go to the king, but queens were not just allowed to go to the king. They had to be summoned to see the king. And so she prayed and waited. Finally, she got up the courage, she got dressed, and she marched right into that courtroom. And 
thank her lucky stars. The king welcomed her graciously and said, Queen Esther, I will give you anything you ask. And Queen Esther, fast on her feet, said, You know what? I'd like to invite you and Haman, your royal vizier, to a banquet. And so indeed, they came. And they dined, and it was delightful. And then Queen Esther dropped this big news on the king. My dear king, Haman wants to do away with all my people, for I am of Jewish descent. And the king was enraged. He knew nothing of what all of this was about. Haman had tricked him. And so, ha so the king marches off for a moment, and Haman goes to Esther and begs her, Please, Esther, have mercy on me. And the king came back, and he was enraged to see what Haman was doing. And indeed, he had him hanged. Queen Esther won the day. She was so brave. So incredibly brave. And because of her courage, her whole people was saved. We too need to be like Queen Esther. Sometimes we're called to do something that are indeed that is indeed terrifying, that is scary. But with the help of the Lord, all things are possible. All right, and the second holy woman I'd like to speak to you about is Hannah. And Hannah from the Old Testament, not Hannah Montana, sorry, Father Sean McCaffrey, was indeed a holy woman, and her name meant graciousness. She was a pure heart, and she loved the Lord with all her heart. And she was married to a man named Elkanah, and Hannah had a problem. She was barren, and she prayed to the Lord, prayed and prayed that a miracle might happen and she'd have a child. And indeed, that perseverance in prayer paid off, and she bore a son named Samuel. And when she bore that son, she went to God and gave thanksgiving to him. She sang out, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased. Indeed, does that sound familiar to you? It should. It's very similar to Our Lady's Magnificat in the New Testament when she goes to greet Elizabeth. Her song of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord for the gift of her son, Jesus. And so Hannah foreshadows for us Mary. What an awesome thing. And so Hannah teaches us that if you trust in the Lord, all things are indeed possible. And when the Lord does pay off, when he does answer our prayers, we should indeed turn to him in great gratitude and love. My friends, the final holy woman I'd like to speak to you about today is Saint Anne. Indeed, the grandmother of Jesus. And while I'm sure she probably didn't make him milk and cookies like grandmothers tend to do today, she indeed probably was a place of warmth and comfort uh, that Jesus could go to and loved very much. And so Saint Anne comes to us, as well as her husband Joachim, from the Proto-Evangelium of James. And the story tells us that Joachim went to the temple, and he got in trouble because men without offspring were not allowed to enter the temple. And him and Anne were having trouble having children, so they prayed to the Lord, and the Lord indeed blessed them with a child. And this child was not some ordinary child. This child was the most beautiful thing in all creation that God had made. 
none other than our mother Mary. And so indeed, they were blessed and they gave thanks to the Lord. And so St. Anne teaches us that indeed we trust in the Lord, just like Hannah trusts in the Lord as well. It's a pretty big theme, this trusting in the Lord. And indeed, that's the whole theme of the Christian Christmas season. Do not be afraid. Trust in Him. My friends, today, as we complete this series on these holy women, let us remember, if we're not afraid and we trust in the Lord, all things are indeed possible. All right, my friends, break out the champagne because Christ is indeed born. Christmas is finally here, and so there is indeed no uh, to-do thing for this week of Advent. You wouldn't have time to do it anyway. But I do hope that during this Christmas season, you take each and every day to soak in the love of Jesus Christ by celebrating the octave of Christmas, these eight days between Christmas Day um, all the way until New Year's Day, the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, to slow down, to enjoy some time with your family, and to really gaze upon Him, Him that lies in the manger, who's only there because He's madly in love with you and He wants to be with you forever. So Merry Christmas to all, to St. Peter's, to St. Teresa of the Flower, to St. Pius the Tenth High School, and to all my family and friends. Indeed, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Blessed New Year.